Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hi, it's Dr. Eileen Chung, and welcome back to part two of the rapid review on pediatric DKA. Our focus in this video is on management of pediatric DKA. As we talked about in part one, there are key differences in managing pediatric versus adult DKA. This is because of the heightened risk of cerebral edema in pediatric patients with DKA. This is a dreaded complication, so we'll also talk about when to suspect it and how to start managing it in the ER. Let's quickly recap the most important components in the general management here. Number one, unlike in adults, classifying pediatric DKA as mild, moderate, or severe is really helpful in deciding how you're going to approach treatment. Number two, Fluid boluses for correcting hypovolemia are contraindicated unless your patient is in decompensated shock, that is, hypotensive. Number three, starting insulin is delayed for the first one to two hours of management while rehydration is taking place, and the insulin is never bolused. And number four, consult a pediatrician early to help guide fluid and electrolyte management. If your institution has a standardized protocol, you should follow it. The pediatrician can also arrange for early follow-up of your patient if the child's going to be discharged from the ER. Okay, let's get into the nitty-gritty of managing pediatric DKA based on our classification of severity. If your patient has mild DKA, they usually don't look too bad and are tolerating PO fluids. Almost all these kids are treated as outpatients since this helps to normalize this lifelong condition for their families. So even the ER management is geared towards preparing them to go home. They should have oral rehydration and are given a small dose of subcutaneous insulin in the ER. If their tachypnea is resolved and they're tolerating PO fluids, they can be discharged with close follow-up as an outpatient the next day when they'll be giving teaching around diabetes management. You'll want to consult a pediatrician regardless to make sure this follow-up is appropriate and happens in a timely manner. There are two exceptions to outpatient treatment of children presenting with mild DKA and who are looking well. One is children who are younger than five years old. It can be more difficult to manage these kids' sugars and ensure they have good PO intake at home. The other group is those kids in whom you worry don't have good home supports. These kids should be considered for admission. Obviously, patients who have moderate DKA look a bit sicker. They may be vomiting when you first see them. They may also be tachycardic. Let's go through their treatment. Fluids. These kids may look more hypovolemic than they actually are because of dry mucous membranes from their high respiratory rate. So resist the urge to give a fluid bolus unless your patient is hypotensive. Hypotension is suggested by systolic blood pressure less than the 5th percentile adjusted for age. The formula for this is 2 times the age plus 70. If the systolic blood pressure is lower than this value for the child's age, consider a fluid bolus of 5 to 10 mils per kilo with reassessment after each bolus. Don't put these kids on autopilot of multiple or large fluid boluses. If they're not hypotensive, the aim is to replace their volume over the next 48 hours. Use your institution's protocol. But to give you a rough idea of just how judicious your fluid replacement should be, one protocol published as an Ontario Provincial Guideline suggests 7 mils per kilo of IV fluids over the first hour, followed next by an infusion of 3.5 to 5 mils per kilo per hour. Next, let's talk about insulin. This should be started 1 to 2 hours after you start your IV fluids. Unlike in adults, you don't need to know what the potassium is before you start your insulin infusion. Never bolus the insulin. Instead, start the infusion at 0.05 to 0.1 units per kilo per hour. If this is a new diagnosis of diabetes, start at the lower end of that range. Potassium. You can add 40 milli equivalents to your IV fluid if the serum potassium is less than 5.5 and the patient's voided in the last hour. These kids should be consulted for admission based on the severity of their DKA and the fact that they're requiring IV fluids. Moving on to the management of kids with severe DKA, these kids look sick, but they're also the ones at greatest risk for cerebral edema, so the management is really the same as what we talked about in moderate DKA. Even in these patients, you don't give a fluid bolus unless there's hypotension. Otherwise, replace fluids slowly over the next 48 hours. Start an insulin infusion one to two hours after IV fluid rehydration without a bolus. Replace your potassium the same way you would for moderate DKA. 
these kids should be considered for an ICU admission. Kids under two years old who present with decay should also be considered for an ICU admission, regardless of how severe it is. Okay, so you've started the management of your patient with DKA. Now, how do we monitor them? It turns out that it's pretty much equivalent to what we do in adults. That is capillary glucose hourly, and repeat VBG and lights are suggested every two to four hours. Cerebral edema occurs with rapid shifts in plasma osmolality, and we want to prevent this from happening. As the acidosis and hyperglycemic correct, so will the plasma osmolality. So as the acidosis corrects, you'll want to add D5W or D10W to your IV fluids to maintain a higher plasma osmolality. Aim for a blood glucose of 10 to 15 millimoles per liter. Your institution's protocol will guide you with this. The most dreaded complication of pediatric DKA is cerebral edema. And it's the reason for all of our judicious fluid and insulin administration in its treatment. Unfortunately, despite these best practices, it can still develop. It's also important to remember that some patients will actually present to the ER with cerebral edema. So let's talk about how we can recognize it and what we can do about it. If the child's presenting with an altered level of consciousness, it should be a red flag for you to consider that he or she has cerebral edema. Because up to 20% of kids in DKA present with it. Don't simply assume that the decreased LOC is due to the DKA. You should also suspect cerebral edema in any child who has an altered level of consciousness if he or she's been given an insulin or fluid bolus or a large amount of fluid, especially if it's hypotonic. Also suspect cerebral edema if there's been a change in the patient's LOC during management of their DKA. It's important to note that an alteration in LOC can also present as increased irritability. Be on the lookout for those kids whom we know are at high risk to present or develop cerebral edema to begin with. They are kids under 5, new onset diabetics, patients who present later and whom are more dehydrated, and those with a greater acidosis. Cerebral edema is scary, so let's keep management to the KISS rule and keep it simple when you recognize it. Number 1. Elevate the head of the bed. Number 2. Try to increase plasma osmolality rapidly by giving either mannitol or hypertonic saline. The dose of 20% mannitol is 0.5 to 1 gram per kilo IV over 20 minutes. The dose of 3% hypertonic saline is 5 to 10 mils per kilo. A key point here is that you can give these things if you suspect cerebral edema. You don't have to wait until you think your patient is coning in order to give it. After giving the mannitol or hypertonic saline, restrict all other IV fluids to one-third of the maintenance rate. And of course, number three, call for help. These kids are going to the ICU. This video was all about management, so let's summarize the key points here. Number one, to guide you on how best to manage and disposition a case of pediatric DKA, it's very helpful to first classify the patient as a case of mild, moderate, or severe DKA. Number two, in your resuscitation of these kids, think low and slow. PO fluids and sub-Q insulin for those who have mild DKA and are tolerating oral intake, Even for those who are sicker, have moderate or severe DKA, and need IV fluids, no fluid boluses should be given unless they're hypotensive. Fluid replacement should take place gradually over 48 hours. And don't bolus your insulin if they need an infusion. And number three, if any child presents with altered level of consciousness or has a change in level of consciousness during their management in the ER, suspect cerebral edema. Elevate the head of the bed, treat them with either mannitol or hypertonic saline, and call for help.